one two one two one two it's your boy yours truly the boy sorry everybody i know it's been a long time but i'm coming back with the audio because i'm still trying to figure out the video situation and uh, here we go okay listen it's after 12 so when you get to the deeper 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 conversation with someone i have a special guest here shall remain anonymous <laughs> but listen um say hello to the mic and say hello to the mic hello people okay so people listening um we're going to be talking about interracial couples today yes the person right next to me is a female yes she is white <laughs> uh listen um i know there's a very special moment going on right now with black girls and everything like that all supports through them why do i say this because my mom is black my sisters are also black okay um listen let's keep supporting the black lives matter movement and all the good stuff peace to everybody let's end racism in 2020 it might not happen but let's move towards that direction anyway um coffee season is happening so i feel like it's right for us to have this discussion okay you know when you get into a conversation with someone and you just have great talk and everything okay cool so interracial couple um you've been in a relationship with a black person right i haven't um i thought i was but it turned out to be a fraud so in my in my little world i was like giving everything and felt to be in a relationship but it turned out to be everything but a mutual relationship so. okay so um do you feel like obviously like um i feel like there's always like few things with like a relationship with like uh for me um i've dated black and um uh, what you call it and caucasian girls i've i would like the asian because i am all for everyone and yes people will come at me and say oh my god you should stick to your own people from your own country your culture and stuff like that i no, i unfortunately i wasn't raised backwards i i was also raised with i have uh, caucasian people in my family so i have mixed race grandparents so there when is was that. the first time that you dated a caucasian uh person at what age um i think my first girlfriend was caucasian um but it was i think for that that space when you're young you're basically just dating person to dating i think the interesting part comes when you're trying to get to know each other when you grow up when you grow older you hang around with people that date the caucasian people but in the end they just switched it <laughs> and some of them there was religions involved religions involved and the mother's like you have to marry somebody from africa because they'll understand you better yeah. i think i went through that route and i felt like i needed something that suits me for who i am i just didn't want to be identified my wife or my girlfriend or whoever she was going to be to be identified by the fact that they are black they're from the same country that, that that's good that's not always good the case because every partner that i follow that scene whether it was cousins whether it was people in my family it was just basically all going to hell and these people were perfect cop perfect matches from the same country mm -hmm. same religions and all went through hell you understand people listen i'm gonna say something i know i'm speaking a lot i'm not giving the guest speaker time to speak but she will speak on her own terms okay so i'm dictating this from now on <laughs> listen it may seem own country same age or whatever the case is you know what to say age is nothing but a number and uh religion all that kind of stuff may seem cool but guess what love wins my sign could sound corny right now but love always wins because once you get with that person and get to know who that person is you will hate them for the eternity and there's a lot of people out there that are literally just getting married or getting together for those sakes and they choose to suffer i didn't want that for myself so whenever you see me next time don't look at me sideways because my life is mine and yours is yours now let's begin this podcast okay so um what you i just said it. love does not race you just exactly said it. uh i want to know what are the challenges you encounter when you're looking for like a say say if you're looking for a black man what could you possibly be the challenges that you encounter well the biggest challenge is probably that people pretend to be interested in you 
uh, but they don't really let you into their world on the long run. So, do you think because of the shame? Um, yeah, yeah. They like to be around you. They like to. When you say they like to be around you, you're not literally speaking for everyone. You're speaking for you. Exactly. I'm. I'm just speaking like from my point of view. You could be a you. weirdo for all we we yeah, know. Yeah. Like you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. And like you know, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, like the biggest challenge is to to actually um, arouse interest on the long term. So it's just like, just imagine you encounter someone who comes from a completely different direction. But you are into each other. You are into each other. But then question come like, how does my family react to that person? How yeah. does my social circle react to that person? Yeah. How would I react to that person in two years from now if I find out that it doesn't work? And then I have to like cut everything we make and have to say, oh, it was a mistake. And everybody is going back to me like, oh, why did you date that white girl? I told you from the beginning. I want to cut you just one sec. I don't mean to cut you. I just want to say for everyone, my family or anyone that's listening, friends and people that so call think they know me listen am i popping with an asian girl i absolutely don't care about what you're thinking and your opinions i might stand there or sit there and listen what you have to say out of respect but it'll be literally just wind going from one ear to another because I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I feel like my mistake, if I'm making a mistake, then allow me to make that mistake. You understand? But I think I'm old enough to know exactly what I'm going through. I don't think I do not need a lecture from anyone that do not know my whole life like that to give me. Not even my mom can stop me from the people that I do. My mom knows. She knows what's up. You understand? She can't come in and dictate. I say, oh my God. She... No, she knows what's up. She knows what's up. At this point, she just wants me to be happy. Go. You were saying about um, dating for somebody from a different background, your socials, and, you know, obviously friends. You have friends that are always clowning or friends that are always being in your ear. Why are you with yeah, that Yeah, but person? these are like external factors. Um, and again, I'm talking from a very subjective point of view. Mm -hmm. But there's, there are also internal factors you have to consider. Like you can always blame the world. You can be like, yeah, he wasn't or she wasn't into me because blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge when it comes to interracial relationships is to know about yourself. You need to know, is that interest fundamental? which I feel, or is it just a phase? Oh, You're just going that's through a good a phase. One. So you have to ask yourself, am You're I into whatever, into whatever, phase. and let's replace like race with eth ethnicity maybe. You have to know, am I into that ethnicity or into that personality, into that origin of a person because I really am into it and I feel it, or do I follow any trend? Do I follow, follow any any desires that are just like short term but what if it's not a phase what if it's some people really are into black people but then, then again you they're ashamed rely on it. they're ashamed to go through all the way through no, and no, no, then no. Let, let me stop they you just here. switch let me stop it here. for the safe position mm -mm. and just mm -mm -mm. end up with people that they feel like they're safe with i feel like that if you are sure about yourself you show that to your external surrounding. yeah but some people are just cowards some people just won't just get up and say okay cool this is this is because you know what comes with it the territory that comes with it there are there the constant staring when you go out to show up obviously if you're black or white whatever and there is because the world is not out there like that like you might feel like you know there's something you might feel like you're you're like you know you're in a great position the world is not out there like that especially people that go to church oh people that go to church thou shalt not judge they will mm. be the first one to yeah. be on your case you understand like you have to deal with a, your friends you know circles when you go to say for instance for instance if i bring you to like a a, a marriage a wedding or something like that which is like a black uh, let's say african wedding or something like that the moment you walk in all eyes on you listen one is every single black girl that is single that is that's that's seen that wedding that would be looking at you sideways you understand and that's when i think this thing obviously you watch this thing this thing you suggested to me unconscious bias 
that's when that thing falls in. Yeah, that, but exactly. that's another that's another subject for another day. Unconscious bias. When you walk into a place and they, they see somebody, why is it with that white girl? Why why is it beautiful? Why is she taking all our beautiful kings and stuff like mm. that? And the question is now more like, are you worthy enough to be with that so called beautiful king? You understand all that kind of stuff. Um, but not to call you there, I agree with what you're saying, obviously. Um, Let me interrupt you here, because yeah. I feel like you can only take responsibility for your decisions if you know yourself. And wherever you would walk in, like the example you just mentioned, walking mm -hmm. into an African wedding, maybe being the only white person. If you know you are there for a reason and you feel it and it's no showing off and it's pure intuition and it's what you live it's what you truly feel, mm. then people will feel that too. And I feel that spirits can sometimes break bias. And Especially that's not, when people sorry, start that's not, talking that's not to just, you. That's not just black men with white girls. It's that's with also too, with, with, with black women, with of white course. guys. You, you can apply that to everything. Mm -hmm. Also to professional life. Step into a new job, being at a meeting for the first time. If you know you are there because you belong there and you follow your guts then people feel that and people recognize it mm -hmm. that's what i feel like yeah but i feel like there's a lot of challenges that goes with it um um the constant staring the constant uh um when you go meet, that's what you have to do when you go meet that's the normal family. that's normal you know you can never blame people for it because it's I, still I, I weird wouldn't, i wouldn't blame it's them. still weird like obviously i think you have to you have to be you have to be the most unbothered person ever for you to be able yeah, to go through absolutely. that. Like, imagine when you go to the Christmas dinners. Just have to dinners, be relaxed. Just have Christmas, to be... like the Christmas dinner, there's always somebody who's a loud mouth when they get drunk mm -hmm. and they say something, stuff like that. When you go meet with friends, I think for that to be really well balanced, you need to have, like, the both sides need to have balanced friendship where they have equal ratio not equal but they have some racial interaction in this side of friendship and in yeah. this side and they totally understand each other yeah. in that type of pattern ah, i wanted to say something about that because mm -hmm. i just mentioned it like some people are scared about what does my family say what does my cir social circus say um i feel like you you can't choose your family members yeah. That's for sure. Mm. So let's just leave that out here. But concerning your social environment and your social surrounding, I would never surround my, myself with people who wouldn't approve my decisions if they come fact. from my heart. That's definitely fact. So I, I never worried about that. I never. About my family, I don't need to worry at all because they are cool mm -hmm. and they have a broad horizon. But concerning the people you can choose in your life, I would never have to worry about any anybody coming to me like, hey, are you sure you... Because they know whatever I do, I'm doing, I'm following my... What do you think of this? People always say this, um, um, you were like, okay, cool. Um, yo, man, listen, example. You were like, yo, man, listen, man, I'm, I'm dating this girl. I think things are serious. I think it's serious. Taking things to the next level and stuff like that. And then you hear somebody say this in the background. Yo, do you know that black people and white people never last forever, right? What is that? I never heard that sentence. Oh. I never heard that sentence. What kind of black friends you have? They don't let you in the inner circle. They say black people, white people never last forever. I do have a lot of black friends and all of them actually celebrate the interracial thing. And not out of a hype and not out of a trend. They talk about it very honestly. And it can, it some, sometimes it's, it's, it's damned. Like sometimes when not only black and white, but interracial couples get together. Sometimes it's just damned. But sometimes if you really, as I said, know yourself, know what you want and know what you want from the person next to you, then it can work out. I never heard that sentence. That it's a challenge also. I think I could say people are afraid of the challenge. Some people, I know most of the people that, that are mostly, they have like a, they're interracial, they have like a, uh, Caucasian mm. male partner mm. or they're females, you know, so they're black female, black woman, and then all yeah. black men that have a Caucasian and I think uh, the challenge partner. kicks in when it comes to, um, as we talked about, substantial decisions, marriage. So family, basically, when you're getting serious, when, when, yeah, when things get serious, I think that's when the challenge hits, yeah.
But the before thing, everything is funny, everything is puffy, everything is cool. But when you have yeah, to talk about like, well, yeah. when you have to talk about like substantial questions that concern that concern the future, how like, how do we want to raise our kids? Yeah. Does religion play a role? Uh -huh. Which languages are we going to speak at home? Is my family going to take care of the kids when we are on holiday? Do I trust your family to take care of the kids? These are substantial substantial questions that you just have to figure out. And, and that's, you want to constantly go through that. Um, places where you go to these places where people look at you left you understand and I, I admire people that have kids you know they, they're an interracial couple where they have kids and stuff and they go to such such parties and they just um, bother they just don't care like I literally go there and watch those people how do you do it because you you have to think about when you when you do that you have to go to council you have to go against your religion yeah. against your tradition yeah. some some people are just acceptable that that acceptable that that that's it this is what's happening yeah. you go against a lot of things actually basically i can give you a very interesting example here um i used to talk with my grandmother about this topic um she she was like okay louisa let's let's imagine your future husband is black and let's imagine your children will be mixed race. And she asked me, wouldn't you worry about the fact that your children could experience racism in society? And I looked at her and I said, probably society will not completely change in the next 20 or 30 years. But don't you think that's wait, wrong? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. But I said, no matter what society looks like, my children would never grow up without the capacity of the mindset to protect themselves. Yeah, because I think that, like, I don't think people... To be strong, you do, know? Do people not see what, what's wrong right here? Like, when they say, when a child has to grow up and being afraid of experiencing and she racism. She looked at me, she looked like, how, at me. How, how messed up is that? Exactly, and then she looked at me and she smiled and she said, yeah. I never saw it that way. You can give your tool, your, your kids all the tools they might need. I was like, yeah, exactly. That's just messed up. I, I know we, we, we all... The thought is messed up, but it's justified. Like yeah. for her as a grandmother to think like that, I can understand well, where she's it, coming it's, from. It is your grandmother, obviously. So she... Yeah. You understand? But like, the thing is, for you to be able to be in a situation where you think that a child is going to come into the world and it has to worry about racism it's messed up it's messed you understand? up and i think people that get together with other people because they think we are safe our kids but even think about black kids so like black kids like black on black black kids when they got a divorce mm -hmm. you understand not just black kids i feel like black women also got a divorce but that's a conversation for another day because we're talking about black women being black um being underpaid and just yeah. being able to deal with the whole situation that females deal with it as a black woman you understand that's hard that's why i have so much respect for my sisters and so much respect for my mom and for my friends as well that are also black but anyway back to the topic um i feel like those challenges maybe i might be forgetting some of the stuff there but like for you to be able to go through not just raising the kid not just being able to protect your wife you know be the interracial uh type thing i feel like apart from those cons there's also a lot of pros in there and i'm not just trying to he be here and preach to people oh my god this is the keys that you need for you to be with a white person with a white guy or a white girl whatever i don't know these people i don't know how they roll but i'm just saying there's pros and cons okay and does not just mean that i hate black women i mean you just heard me talking a few minutes ago you understand a few seconds ago um um, you have you're bonding two people together. You're bonding two genes. You're bonding two different races and stuff like that. And you have the opportunity to probably bring your kid in a world where they can have the chance to have quadruple mm -hmm. language and stuff like that. I also feel like people. I envy people that go through that challenge to be able to be with another person for a different race, knowing the consequences that will come. I think those people are are super brave when it comes to that yeah. however there's also a thing when it comes to people when they say oh my god you're just dating them because you're gonna have mixed race kids there are people that are out there like that mm -hmm. i was approached once in the nightclub by a person who wanted just to have mixed race kids really? yeah, there are plenty of people that will fake it till they make it and then kick you off the curb <laughs> unfortunately there are people like that i know you're probably naive 
you probably don't ha you guys don't have that over there where you guys are but there are people like that that are out there like that which kind of like it it ruins the whole thing and sets a yeah. bad example for the whole situation really you understand yeah. but so. then i think down the road you also learn um that you know um your kid being with an interracial person i have one of my friends one of my dear friends i won't say her name but she know who she is right and she got with a person um and she was really in love with the person and it was the, the the person was black you understand and he wasn't really there for it. he was there for whatever business he was taking care of and she's but then, caucasian no she's not yeah she's caucasian yeah mm -hmm. and they had a child and she does everything she can to be able to put that kid to learn through the uh, roots of where she comes from more so the roots of where the father comes from yeah. you know she she cooks the food she learns it she makes an effort to be able to mix that kid yeah. with black kids with also caucasian kids and stuff like that and i always admire that about her i feel like that's super cool for her to be able to do that you understand because i think when you get kids involved what people are not realizing these days these people are getting together they create a whole human being mm -hmm. and you don't have the capacity to be able to bring off an offspring or a human being into the world we don't have the right tools to teach them exactly what they need to know to lead their life the right way low-key you guys are the one fucking up this world okay excuse my french like imagine you teach a kid you you raise them racist i might go off topic here but i feel like i need to say this go ahead you you raise a kid racist you understand you come you put all these things like i i learned a, 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 a quote the other day say listen before you have kids fix your trauma first whatever you went through in life fix that first so your kids won't have to inherit it if you experience racism or if you are a racist person fix that fix that first integrate it talk to people find out get you understand because if you don't fix that and you just in the business to have kids for the sake of kids just to have kids and stuff like that because it's cool because that's what we're supposed to do and stuff like that no that's not the way because those kids will inherit that you you will raise them to be those kids to be that way and then they go out in the world they continue that cycle and then the world does not get better so low-key you're not really contributing in anything to better this place you understand and this is why the reason for eons and eons and eons racism continues people don't understand this yeah. This is why racism continue because people are bringing kids up to that. They stop asking me when you see me in the street, when am I having kids? I will have kids when I feel it's okay for me to have kids. And when I feel like I have the right things to bring up for my kids, I don't want my kid to be a pissed off person because he didn't have this type of toy. He goes into the store and steals it, ends up in jail, overpopulate in the black jail community, blah, blah, blah. And that whole cycle keeps going. No, I want to be able to have them when it's right. And if I do have them, when I don't have the tools, I'll fight to the end of my life. I say the end to the last sweat of me for me to be able to give him the right tool. Back to the topic of interracial couples that go through that type of situation for them to be able to make sure everything is good for them. Hey, now, wait. you said it in a beautiful way. I know. Thank you. I'm not finished. I had a lot to say, okay? And I had a lot to think, okay? We're coming for this. Listen, we're going to do a lot of audio podcasts. Then we're going to do the video versions as well, okay? With different podcasts talking to different people. It's just kind of hard for me to be able to grab people that kind of like can have a conversation with. So sometimes that's why I'm in these random places. Me, random people like her right here. And then we have these conversations. Listen. I want to give you an advice if you're an international couple. Do your thing. Live your life. You do not owe anybody any explanation. Okay? You might explain to your family. But if you are old enough, okay, you are old enough to live up by your consequences, by your life, by the things that you do, do your thing. Okay? Be about your life. At the end of the day, you go back home to your own bed you make your own bed in the morning the money comes from your bank account comes from your pocket you should be able to make your own choice not a religion not a church and i'm not bashing churches there should be there to say no you can do this that'll be your own choice okay um listen people i don't know do you have anything to add um as an advice no, no, advice, basically anything. From experience, you were saying that you got with people and you, you say that uh, they just got with you for... Yeah, two points. 
Um, we talked about it before. The one point, the first point is... Do you think they were ashamed to show you that to the family? No, no, let's, it, it let's, was, let's leave that out. I'm not talking about... It was most like, okay, hit and run. I'm talking like, like the, the overall picture. Was it a hit and run? It was a hit and run situation? Kind of, yeah. But I'm talking about the overall um, situation right now. Um, one should always ask him or herself, as I said, if the intuition is real. Is it plant? Was it planted in your mind from social media images? Was it planted in your mind because of anything you saw and you were just like, oh, interracial couples, great, I want to have that too. No, don't go after that. You really have to sit down and have to ask yourself the questions, can I deal with every consequence that comes out of it? And the second advice is to, one way to find that out, and that's the second advice, go for it. And then when you have a negative experience, sit down and ask yourself again, do I still want that? Or are you still just hunting images? Mm. But I feel like sometimes you have dudes as well, black dudes, that have fetish about white girls and stuff like that. That Obviously. would go to a situation where they feel like, oh, I just need to be in this. You cannot influence which people in, uh, step in your life. Yeah. You have, you have, sometimes, of course, you have control over that. You can decide, do I leave the house today and talk to random people in the street? Or do I stay at home? But Is you don't bag? always, absolutely street. not. But I'm just saying that's when you have control of which people you let, oh, yeah, who, whoever you let into your life. But people can be charming. I can be charming. I know plenty of time I walked up to mad white girls and I'm like, yo, listen, man, you got great dimples and stuff and the ball roll. But I feel like there are steps to this. There are white girls that will come into your life and they'll be just like, I want to take this. And they just feel like they find that person attractive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it just black men being the attracted to, to white yeah, girls. Yeah, it's, yeah. Of course, let, it's let the me, other way let around. Me, let me back up my, my, my black kings, you know. Course. Yeah, they come into the life. They say, listen, I find that person attractive because um, uh, muscles or whatever. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. Or oh, the big one is like the big dick. That's what all the girls go for, uh, because yeah, it's some I'm, type I'm, of cool thing. I'm absolutely not talking about sex right here. I'm talking about men and women at the same time. Um, and also, there's also the paper one that black guys go to. It's easier because you go for the paper. I feel like I'm snitching, but I'm sorry. I got to call that on out. The paper one, you understand? They go out, I'm going to get paper off obviously for due to the situation where people come from harsh realities and stuff like that there is that and there's also the ones that people feel like that white girl is rich or that white man is rich and then they'll go for that and stuff like that trust me that it's out there it happens um from where, where i come from that's that's the images that we get but for me traveling to different places i just feel like it's different there you understand which, by the way, I'm going to do a podcast of a place where I went to. And when I found out black girls don't fuck with black guys like that because uh, they think all of them are bomb. And it was just funny how they kind of categorized me automatically into that square as well. As if I was a bomb. Like, well, I don't think all of them were bomb, but like they just put me in that square too. It was just like automatically, oh, you come over here. You were bomb too. You know, uh, but anyway. Um, I feel like, like the sentence you said at the very beginning, love doesn't know race. That's just, that's just it. But that's true And though. matches don't know skin color. Yeah. Imagine you would get to know a person and you had the, you had the control over your skin color and everybody would get to know everybody with the transparent color, with transparent mm -hmm. skin. And then after two or three months, you can reveal your skin color. Yeah. That would be That'd like be cool though. that would be the most neutral way of getting to know each other. Oh, and I feel like if you if you I mean obviously we cannot do that we mm -hmm. see our skin colors uh, at the very first sight, but I feel like that if you are into each other and if you find love in a relationship, you also find the courage to overcome every obstacle that might be put in your way. Also, do you think like um, I always thought about I was flirting with a bunch of ideas that can end races and stuff like that, because it should. Do you think because I think everybody should think about it, if, especially if you're a parent and wh whoever you're married to and if you're bringing a child into the world, if you're not thinking about an idea to end racism, um, I, 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 I think you, you're very, you're a lost person, mm -hmm. okay? So we're just going to wrap up just a little bit here because I feel like we'll be talking for too long, okay? Uh, listen, what do you think about this when parents can actually bring their kids 
to do an ex exchange you know they used to do exchange student yeah. when the student goes to this house <laughs> if it's mandatory for every student to go to a different household of a different race okay to better for the like you know the way they enforcing us to wear masks and stuff like mm. that why don't you just force us listen your white child is gonna go live in with an asian family your white child is gonna live with a black family your black child is gonna live with a white family enforce us for us to bring our child to, to like go do there for just a better world for these kids because i know it's it's a little bit better for these kids just to go in the, into the world because obviously the protests are so like you know yeah white people came out for black lives matter you understand i feel like for them to do that for them to get to a position where these kids in the future when they grow up they just uh, they just better than us you know they don't see this shitty world that we grew up in it you understand and i feel like I, I i don't know i feel like that's one of the things that can just if the government just say look let's go ahead obviously that's not even gonna happen because for some reason racism um it's an advantage for somebody mm -hmm. out there okay i might get killed for saying this but listen um I feel like if they say yes that's a mandatory thing boom that's it it would make the world a better place yeah but then like being racist would be like in secret and shit you know they'd be like you know you have to be in secret and they'll, they'll, they're gonna start like dissolving because there'll be no more advantages of doing that yeah. you know there'll be like kkk members but like their child are bringing back black girls back home <laughs> and it's like room there's no more meaning to it then all of the sudden people forgot what racism was all about <laughs> remember they just forgot and that's it. It's all gone. And you, you know, like I would love Racism. that. Oh, that's so 2021. Yeah. What the hell are you talking <laughs> about? Jeez. We're not in the fifties. You know, it's like a style, you know, you know, like when everybody had Mohawks and it just like, it goes away. No one yeah. does Mohawks anymore. Yeah. It's the same thing with racism. It's just, it's just, it's just goes outdated. Away. It's just outdated. Yeah. But anyway, I hopefully I didn't, I didn't talk too much. Hopefully um, we reach this point. I, I don't know if you have anything to add. You said it. You said it. You heard it, people. <laughs> I said it. But listen, uh, follow me, your truly the boy on Instagram. Talk to podcast. Talk to podcast on Instagram. On YouTube, subscribe, uh, like, hit the ring, whatever thing that does, all that stuff. Listen, guys, I'll try to provide you guys more context. Thank you very much for listening to me for over 30 minutes. I know I can sound annoying some of the times, but anyway, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I am me at the end of the day. I do not give. Okay, cool. I think I should end it here. Good job.